everyone. It's me, Demetra K of the Demetra K Show here on YouTube and the proud contributor of the African Diaspora News Channel and the African Diaspora News Insider. If you can do me a favor and please subscribe to all channels and like this video, I will greatly appreciate it. So I am covering day seven of the Derek Chauvin murder trial. Again, you guys know that he is standing trial for the murder of George Floyd in 2020, May 25th to be exact. Uh, Derek Chauvin put his knee to the neck of George Floyd for nine minutes and 29 seconds, causing him to die for a lack of better words. And so now we are on day seven, as I said, um, of the trial and the prosecution right now is still putting on their case. And today they called forth, well, they say four witnesses, but it was kind of five people were involved today and I'll get into that. So they are trying to prove that what Derek Chauvin did to George Floyd was excessive force. And so they have been calling a lot of law enforcement uh, personnel, if you will, to the stand. And a lot of veterans, the chief and lieutenants and sergeants and a whole host of other people who have expertise um, in policing and using excessive force and training and those type of things. But to start with, um, Maurice, everybody was saying Maurice, but it's Maurice Hall, which is uh, George's friend who was in the passenger side when uh, George was apprehended by Derek Chauvin. He, being Mr. Hall, decided to plead the fifth uh, due to uh, self-incrimination. So he didn't want to uh, incriminate himself due to uh, some of the testimony that may come forward. But uh, he still has to come back on Monday to see if um, he's willing to testify. So the judge is still wanting him to come and and I'm sure the prosecution and the defense wants him to come and give his side of the story because Mr. Hall at one point in time said that he is George's voice because George is no longer here. But it sounds like um, Mr. Hall is facing some uh, issues of his own. Uh, criminally speaking, he has a domestic violence charge that he is facing. And also uh, George's girlfriend implemented Mr. Hall um, last week as being a supplier to some of the drugs that they were using. So it's kind of sticky. And you can understand why uh, Mr. Hall, uh, George's friend, may not want to testify. All right, so moving all along, or right along, I should say, uh, to some of the other witnesses that uh, were there today. So the first one was that of Sergeant Jody Steiger. Now, he is actually um, a police officer, a sergeant out of Los Angeles. And he said he was on vacation, so he came out to testify, to render his um, expertise in the use of force. And he says that he has had to look at um, over 2,500 cases involving excessive force by police officers. And he said, in his opinion, that the force that uh, Derek Chauvin used was excessive. And check this video out really quick. And based upon your review of these materials and in light of the Graham factors, what is your opinion as to the degree of force used by the defendant on Mr. Floyd on the date in question? Uh, my opinion was that the force was excessive. So as you saw there, uh, Mr. Steiger, Sergeant Steiger, I should say, you know, said it was excessive force in his opinion. All right. And so moving along to the next witness was uh, Sergeant Kerr. He is out of Minneapolis and he basically said that he is trained uh, Derek Chauvin, that Derek Chauvin in 2016, I uh, took a 40 hour course where they did some role playing and all of that and how to, um, deescalate crisis, if you will, a crisis being, you know, if you're apprehending somebody and if things start to escalate, they're trained on how to deescalate, um, a situation. And that includes the crowd as well, how to deescalate the crowd. And so, um, but so far, um, everybody that's gotten up to testify says that what Derek Chauvin did was considered excessive force, right? And that that's not what they're trained to do, okay? So the next person was Lieutenant Johnny Marcil. And he said that, yes, there are times where a knee to the neck is necessary if um, a suspect is resisting uh, vigorously and all of that. But he says once the suspect is no longer a threat and um, resisting, then you are to roll them over to their side um, in the prone position. So again, you guys are probably hearing a lot about the prone position, which is when a suspect is on their stomach and they're handcuffed behind their back. He says, the sooner the better. The sooner you roll the suspect over, the better. 
because obviously it does restrict breathing and can cause you know a person to have some issues. Now, he also said that they are trained to put their knee on the shoulder area, not necessarily the neck, because on the cross by the defense, they showed a picture and they asked Mr. Um, Marcel, um, do you see Chauvin's uh, knee on the neck or the shoulder? And so he, you know, said there's a part of his knee and, you know, his leg that's on the shoulder and some on the neck. Now, um, people, uh, experts are saying pretty much that the defense is trying to take like a five to 10 second uh, piece of the video. One of the uh, body cams, I think, is that by uh, King, one of the uh, art officers that were there and saying, well, look, he actually had his knee on his shoulder. But they're saying that was toward the very end for a couple of seconds. So it's like, eh. You're really trying to stretch things here, right? But the one thing um, that the defense did score, and actually they said this was a good day for the defense because uh, Lieutenant Marcel, you know, uh, basically said that he has taught officers that if they can talk, they can breathe, right? So they that kind of, they said, may have been a, a win in that area for the defense. Now let's get to this other um, witness and her name is oh her name is um a police officer Nicole McKenzie. Now Nicole Nicole McKenzie is a medical response coordinator and CPR instructor, and she actually said the opposite. She says no, that's not necessarily true. It's not true that if a person can talk that they can breathe, and she said that doesn't mean that they can breathe adequately. So a person could be you know vocal but still having issues breathing, and so there was some contradiction there between um, Lieutenant uh, Marcel and that of Officer McKenzie. Now, she also said this was uh, supposed to be a score for uh, the defense where she was saying that, yes, yeah, sure, the crowd could be an issue, you know, in regards to distracting an officer that is supposed to be rendering aid to a suspect that needs it. But, you know, again, the other officer, uh, uh, Yang, rather, he said that they're able to de-escalate, they're trained to de-escalate the situation anyway. So it was kind of a little bit of back and forth uh, between the experts as to what exactly is supposed to take place. But again, this is day seven, um, supposed to be a good day for the defense because they were able to, you know, score some ground as far as maybe planning doubt. Because remember, all they need to do is plant doubt in the mind of one juror. That's all they need to, you know, blow it for the prosecution rather and, uh, and, and score a win for Derek Chauvin, who is facing second and third degree murder and second degree uh, manslaughter, if I'm not mistaken. And so anyway, I'm going to come back before you um, with day eight uh, to see what happens on that day. And I should also say too, Derek Chauvin is allowed to have um, a visitor uh, sit there in the courtroom with them. But they said that so far, no one has showed up to take that seat. In fact, yesterday they moved the seat because no one has showed up to support him or a family member or anybody who's been there by himself, you know, with the exception of his uh, defense counsel, but nobody has showed up. So, you know, I think that's very telling. But anyway, before I go also, they're saying that uh, this is huge in regards to law enforcement because, um, as I heard this morning, they said that they have thrown Derek Chauvin over the blue wall. So we'll see you guys. Anyway, for more insightful commentary, please subscribe to this channel and my channel, The Demetri K Show, here on YouTube. Peace. Hello, everyone. Please make sure you subscribe to the African Diaspora News Channel app on these platforms.